Okay, so now we're ready to um, dig into our uh, allocated memory object here. Um, not really a whole lot going on. Oh, I've got that on the wrong screen. <laughs> um, not really a whole lot going on on here. Um, or a whole lot extra. Um, you know, in, in, a, you know, in a sense, the uh, majority of the work would still be in that um, memory object that we're inheriting from. Um, and admittedly, this isn't really one that I feel like is super needed. Um, I honestly only use it in my teleporter for a save name string. Um, and if you're making trainers, you know, you would just make a form and use a, like an edit box or something like that. So, um, again, you know, you know, it just depends upon what you're wanting to do here. Um, just because in my mind, if I was actually going to be doing like executable code, I'd be using some kind of auto assembler script. I wouldn't really do it this way. Um, and then, you know, again, if you're making trainers, um, you're just going to be using edit boxes and stuff like that. You're not really going to be using uh, memory records. Um, but if you are making tables and you want to have, you know, um, different settings that wouldn't necessarily be involved with a normal auto assembler script, um, like my teleporter is set up, um, this could be where it's useful. So that way you could write a Lua module still have access to memory objects that you could ultimately put in the table and uh, you know that way the person can set a string or a number or whatever the case may be so um just kind of depends upon what you're doing and how you're doing it um so anyway with the uh, allocated memory object um we just add two new properties here um and then one private one um and this private one is just more it will ultimately be the address that the memory is allocated at. Um, to actually access it, you would just still use the uh, normal self.address or uh, instance.address um, or get address, really. Um, but the uh, memory address one is more for uh, deallocating. Um, and that's why it's private, you know, because you just, there's really no reason to access it, you know, and deal with it. And that way it's available to uh, deallocate and you don't have to keep track of it. So here we're setting our two other properties and it's just going to be memory size. I'm just giving it, you know, a default size that I normally would for any memory in an, you know, in an auto assembler script. Obviously you can use whatever size you need, you know. Um, and then auto register symbol just makes it so we don't have to um, allocate the memory and auto register the symbol um, because again, uh, or register the symbol because um, again, the underlying uh, symbol class that the memory class inherits from um, for its get address to work, it has to be a registered symbol or something that evaluates in such a way that it's, you know, get address, you know, cheat engines actual get address function or get address safe can return an address. Otherwise it, it would kind of break um, a lot of the behavior because uh, most of the, you know, as we've seen in the memory object, everything uses that get address. Um, it's not accessing it here. Um, and you could actually make those kind of changes to the module if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I just chose to go this route because to me, you know, I'd rather just register the symbol um, and get access to it that way. And then, you know, it's just... And, and, you know, ultimately, we'll get into that function here in just a second. Um, so ultimately here, what we're doing is we've got two parameters, um, basically just size and target self. Um, I allow the first one to be size or target self. So we end up, you know, we check self and then we end up creating a variable size just to help make things clear again. Um, and then we're going to check size or target self and see if it's a Boolean. Um, if it is a boolean, then we go ahead and set target self to this, and we fall back to our our instances memory size property. Um, and then if it is not a boolean, then it's um, either nothing or uh, or it is the size. And so we're going to either use that if it is something, assuming that it is the correct type, um, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, fall back if it's not something. Um, and here, technically, we could call, actually, we haven't seen it yet. We will see it in here in just a minute, but we could call this um, check argument type. Um, 
but the way it would throw the air just wouldn't be right for this. Um, so I, you know, you'd almost want to do a, you know, do the right uh, kind of check. But to me, you know, it, this would really only work, you know, not work if you actually pass something, you know, uh, goofy, the wrong type altogether. Um, we could kind of get around that by just uh, doing an if else and actually check this for a number. Um, and then do an else where we just hard set this to to the um, instances memory size and kind of make sure we won't get an error there. Um, if I'm passing something really goofy, uh, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of not sure about that. <laughs> kind of depends upon what you want to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. Eh, something to think about. Um, we'll go ahead and move on for now. Um, so we've got our size and target self properties, and now we're going to double check our target self property and make sure it's a boolean. If it is not, then it may have been, you know, you know not set here kind of thing. Um, and thus we're just going to go ahead and fall back on the instances target self. Um, so here we're going to say, you know, check if we need, you know, if we need a target self or target the uh, cheat engine process. Um, and if we do, we're just going to call. Um, allocate shared memory local and then if we don't then we're just going to allocate shared memory um, and I, I choose to use this one um, actually I want to say it's I don't think there is a um, allocate memory local is what it was that may even just be my text highlighter I'm not 100% sure <laughs> I'd have to go I swear that's what it was um, it, we could look in the cheat engine Lua file real quick but um, the, the added benefit of using the um, allocate shared memory be it local or not, um, is it won't keep reallocating memory. Um, even if we called this, you know, uh, five, six, you know, any number of times, um, as long as the name is the same that we pass to it, it will, it won't reallocate memory. Um, and and because of the way the underlying symbol object um, works with this, um, the name already needs to be unique for each kind of instance anyway, so this way, you know, I, I don't see that being a major conflict. Um, but then this way we can allocate that shared memory under the name, and then we can go ahead and set it, you know, allocate as much memory as we need, be it however that was set. Um, and then from that, either one of those, we get back a memory address for the uh, allocated memory. And so at that point, we're going to go and set our self.address, um, our address property. Um, and then we're just going to make sure if you did pass me a size or a target self that we're setting the, uh, the um, properties in the instance to what they need to be. Um, obviously, if you didn't, then you were not really doing anything there. Um, and then here, we're just going to check to see if, you, you know, auto register symbol is true. If it is, then we're going to go ahead and register the symbol using that new address. Um, the address that it was allocated at. And then we just go ahead and return um, the address when we're done. And um, I, I did go ahead and choose to do, you know, use the memory address instead of like you see here where I'm using address. Um, I don't know if this will actually return an error message. I'd have to figure out a way to get it to throw an error first. Um, I don't think it does. I think it'd just be, you know, if you mess up a parameter, it'll throw an error and it won't really return anything. Um, I'm not, you know, eh, it'd take a little bit of testing with that. But at any rate, we return whatever the, that returns so that way you know I can deal with it outside of this and figure something out um, and then I'm just uh, declaring some aliases here or an alias here um, or an alias <laughs> sorry um, uh, and just making it kind of match the normal auto assembler allocate function just so that way I, I don't have to remember to always type it out if I do it this way it, it'll work um, not really necessary, but just kind of depends on taste there, what you want to do. Um, I don't see it as hurting anything, especially since it's not like it's a global thing. It's just, you know, within our allocated memory class here. Um, so then we get to deallocate memory. Um, and this one, of course, again, we're going to check self. Then we're going to actually check to make sure we did, 
you know, we're not really checking for number here, um, which I probably should do. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that real quick. It won't take but a second. Um, so we're going to go ahead and check for explicitly a number to make sure we got the uh, return we needed when we allocated um, because the uh, deallocate actually, you know, requires the address um, for it to actually be able to deallocate. And this way I'm not having to worry about get address or, or any of that. It's just whatever we got back from here, we're going we're gonna to attempt to deallocate using that. Um, and so if it is a number, then we'll go ahead and deallocate, and then we're going to set that to nil just to clear it out. Um, and then we're going to, you know, so we're not trying to deallocate it more than once if this does get called more than once for whatever reason. And then if we, you know, the idea being here is if we auto-register a symbol, we're going to go ahead and unregister that symbol automatically. Um, and then just a couple more aliases here, uh, making it more like the auto assembler one. And then this is actually how, you know, you can see here, this is actually how it's in the documentation for cheat engine. Um, so, you know, let's, I want to say actually what the lowercase works, but I think I've actually set an alias explicitly just to make sure I didn't get errors in my, um, functions, uh, module or file. Um. So I can't say for certain, <laughs> but a lowercase a would work here. Um, I know I can use it that way, but that's because I've made an alias at somewhere else. Um, but anyway, so I just set two aliases kind of matching these two different forms. Um, so that way, you know, I can use any of that and it, it'll work just fine. Um, and again, that's, you know, up to you how you want to do that. You could just declare it the one way up here and be done with it. Um, yeah, because this one really, yeah, my teleporter does use this, so it kind of depend um, as far as how you use it down the line but anyway um, so that's that's it for um, allocated memory um, start talking reshooting videos and it's hard to keep track of what I've actually covered and what was covered in a video that's not going to ever get posted because I've deleted it um, so we really don't need the fines here um, we can just comment that out or remove it entirely. I, you know, I just kind of leave the defines everywhere, just so that way if I do add something to there that needs to be used here, I don't really have to think about it. I can just kind of carry on. Um, and then we do need our helpers for the uh, check self, and then we do need the memory object. Um, and then just remember to make sure to uh, modify, you know, modify these uh, requires so that way it matches your module. Um, other than that, that's that's the end of the uh, allocated memory object. Okay, so um, I've finished shooting. I actually shot the um, allocated memory object video and then doing the grouped memory object video. Um, but I made some changes to this, and then in the end, some things got a little funky, and I just I'm not sure if I'm happy with the module yet. So I I think I need to sit down and think about this one some more um kind of figure out what i want to do but i do feel like i'm going to go ahead and release this um allocated memory object um <coughs> and hopefully I'll, I'll finish that one off and we'll get a video on that as well um but for now i'm also thinking you know really while i'm kind of thinking about that and all that kind of stuff um I think we've kind of covered objects well enough. Um, I think getting into that allocated memory kind of gives you a final object there. Um, and then of course, you, you know, you're welcome to come up with your own method of doing the uh, group memory object. It's really not even that complicated. Um, oops, that's the wrong file. Uh, the main thing was I started trying to add more functionality to it that I'm just, I'm really not convinced I'm gonna use and it just makes things overly complicated. Um, and could lead to problems down the road. Um, I, you know, to give kind of a gist of it, basically in my mind originally, you would set memory objects more like this, you know, and, and so say it was a string and you wanted a wide string, you would set it as a type wide string and you know, and all that kind of stuff. If it's a D word and you want it to be signed, you would set signed. Um, and then that way it would just make the reading and writing of all of them easier. Um, and then I started wanting to be able to pass multiple parameters to each of them and all this stuff, which got me into, you know, dealing with tables and tables and then telling apart, you know, um, optional parameters and, and everything like that. Um, 
So I'm kind of thinking I want to go back through this one and just rethink some things um, and probably even just simplify it in the end, I think. Um, so again, we're just going to kind of skip that one for now. I don't think it's really necessary. Um, while I'm on it, actually, um, Free ER actually kind of mentioned um, setting up symbol to use more offsets. Um, the post is on the, uh, if you want to read his post, it is on the um, modules, or uh, yeah, modules and OPP um, uh, video, I do believe. I double check real quick. Yeah, why modules in OPP? Um, OPP, I keep doing that. Uh, why modules in OOP? Um, where he talks about that, and that's where he actually posted his code, if you want to see that. Um, I can tell you I can run this, and it does work. Um, and it seems like an interesting idea. I'd have to play with it a little bit to see how I would get it to like work with the uh, get address or something like that. But it just, you know, to me it really does, uh, you know, show that there are, I mean, there are tons of ways to do this kind of thing. And it just depends upon how you think it should work. Um, and really, to me, that's that's the whole point of writing your own freaking modules is, you know, you make things work how you think it should work and not how I think it should work or anybody else, um, you know. Um, and then, you know, like I said, I, you know, I actually kind of want to poke around with that a little bit more with my symbol class and see if, if I can get something like that work into where you can use it in a slightly different way and then maybe have, you know, this would be another symbol object or, or something. I don't know. I haven't really thought about that yet. Um, but essentially, you know, doing something like that. And then this even illustrates, um, I want to say this is actually more of a common way that you would actually see this object-oriented program if you actually just dig into it in just pure Lua. Because um, this, you know, this looks very much like a lot of that code to me. Um, and you know so that you know it just shows there, there's different ways and different formats you can use um you can come up with a lot of things much like you're seeing here now you're actually going to see how this um index uh meta method being set you know you can do some interesting things with it because he's actually checking to see if it's in this offset table um well it actually be the offsets table he's just setting a local off there um and then if it's not there then he looks inside the actual symbol object and you know um, so you can get some interesting behavior using that kind of stuff. Um, and that's just a, a good example of that. And just, you know, thinking of a, you know, a different way to do things that may even be far simpler um, and still work just as well when you really look at it under the hood. I mean, it obviously doesn't have like the get address thing, but there, you know, there's, there's, you could easily, I'm thinking you could add something like that pretty easily. Um, Cause I'm pretty sure if I remember right uh, when I ran this, how we can go and run it real quick just to see. I think when I ran this, it just outputted the offsets was all it did. Yeah. Um, but it does kind of show the idea that there you could, you know, and then have, like, even in our grouped memory, use something like this. So that way it could do those vectors real easy and you wouldn't have to declare that list. You could just, um, but they would have to all be the same. That would be the main difference, I would say. Whereas mine, you could you can actually read integers and floats and do all kinds of different goofy stuff depending upon what you need to do. But... But again, that's, you know, what do you actually want to pull off with it? What do you think you're going to actually make use of, you know, if you don't think you'll ever need to read separate, you know, different type values, there's no real reason to set that up, you know, or at the very least, just set up what you know you need now and, you know, make changes later. Again, that's all part of that modular programming idea is just, you know, we can make those changes and not have to do it all over the place, um, as long as we don't break the functionality we originally had, that's usually the only kind of catch that you will run across. Um, and I do run into that plenty. Um, so where we go next is kind of what I'm wanting to do, figure out next. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I don't know if we're just going to keep digging into modules. I really want to get into the um, plugins, though, a part of me. Just because I think, you know, being able to modify Cheat Engine more, um, that would be more useful to a lot of people right off the bat. Just because, you know, you can start learning how to add your own functionality. Um, you know, like I was saying, do it like a more, I don't remember that table actually, or that video got posted or not. Um, but like I was saying, or, well, I said before, I don't know if it got posted or not. Uh, making um, some kind of uh, templating engine. 
Um, probably not one quite getting into uh, like mine uses with the um, with that actual templating engine class or that templating engine module um, because uh, I, I'm pretty sure I have stated this before, but um, it allows uh, actual um, Lua execution. Actually, I don't really have a lot of Lua, and it won't look for, you know clear. Um, it allows Lua execution inside the uh, templates, um, not only inside the settings files, but inside the templates themselves. Um, and it, it actually kind of requires it in some spots. Uh, I did that so that way, you know, more of the formatting is in the templates and not outside of the template, because that was one thing I had to do when I'm um, just doing a simple replace with some of this stuff. You know, I'd have like this, you know, O code thing here. And if it was two or three lines, I would actually have to format that what it replaced it with to, to do something there. I mean, again, you can add settings and do all this other stuff to kind of deal with that, but um, I ended up going with this a little bit more complicated route, but um, but in the end, I was happy with it, um, and that's what kind of mattered to me, <laughs> you know, is, is that I liked it, um, and then I just kind of shared it, so that way if anybody else wanted to mess with it, they were free to. Um, so, you know, again, I'm not real sure where we're going next. I am kind of leaning towards... Um, plugins right now but I'm have to give that some thought but I just kind of wanted to give a quick update at the end of this other video just to um, explain um, so anyway on to the next